Okay, here's a pencil. Now, you and I might take it for granted. It is just a pencil after all. But try telling that to the Museum of Pencils in Cumbria. There's also a museum of dog collars in Leeds, a museum of oriental plasterwork in Peebles, and a lawnmower museum in Stockport. We went to two of these so-called micro-museums to meet the men and women who are so passionate about preserving our history that they do it all for free. Selling the wind is a very old form of magic. It involves going out on a windy day, knotting the wind into the rope, and then you would sell the rope to a sailor, and when he wanted a fair wind, he would untie one of the knots. Joyce Froome is a researcher of magic practices and a voluntary guide at the Museum of Witchcraft in Boscastle in Cornwall. Hello, Hi, Graham. Joyce. Come on through. Graham King, who's curated the museum's collection for over 28 years, believes magic and charms have always been part of our lives. Morning, Mandrakes. This museum's important because it's covering an area of folklore, an area of history that's ignored by almost every other museum. There's nearly 4,000 artefacts here, from Enderpeer charms to historical archives. People seem to think that we're some sort of shrine to evil. We're not. We show the curses, we show the charms. Witchcraft, or pagan magic, has been practised in Europe for centuries, but it wasn't judged to be satanic until the 15th century. The state, fearing the spread of heresy, made it punishable by death. One of the more poignant and one of the more powerful displays in the museum is the list. You know, I've just put a thousand names. We could have put a lot more. These were people that have been executed. It has to be said that they were mainly poor women. We had the likes of Matthew Hopkins, the witch finder general, who made his living by persecuting these people. Joyce and Graham don't buy into the fairy tale idea of the evil witch, but they do believe that the supernatural has always been part of our lives. This Hitler effigy, mass-produced during the war, was used to curse our arch enemy. It's very ancient magic, but at the same time it's something that is continually being reinvented and continually being made relevant to the time that it occurs. It's a way for people to cope with the challenges of their lives and something that gives them courage and hope. And essentially, it's a very positive force. So from museums at night, we're going to be drawing on the magic of the candle flame. We're going to be filling the museum with candles and our objects are going to look amazing. On the other side of the country in Norfolk, Dr Mike Bridges and Russell Frary will be burning a different kind of light. Gas light. Welcome to the Fakenham Museum of Gas and Local History. There was a time when every town had a gas works, but this is the last of its kind in the country. Without volunteers like Mike and Russell, it might just have rotted away. But today, it's a scheduled ancient monument. They're keen to tell visitors that before the discovery of North Sea gas, the whole country was fueled by gas extracted from coal. When we get children coming in, some of them have never seen coal. So we have to explain to them what coal is and how after the process that becomes coke. And this is a piece of coke and a lot of them think coke comes in a bottle. When town gas came on stream, it made a tremendous difference. All of these things had a tremendous effect on the lives of women. One of the phrases that I've heard most frequently uttered by women when they come in here is, oh, I had one like that when I was first married. <laughs> what we have got here is Victorian technology and domestic nostalgia. When all the dials and clocks have stopped, micro-museums like this one keep history alive, even in its smellier, murkier corners. For museums at night, Mike shines a gaslight on the old courtyard 
and recites Robert Louis Stevenson's The Lamplighter. For we are very lucky with a lamp before the door. And oh, before you hurry by with ladder and with light. Oh, Leary, see a little child and nod to him tonight. <laughs>